gentlemen, this is Pastor Wayne Voss, and this is the Tuesday morning trumpet, hallelujah, uh, 13th, 2023, it's another beautiful day, great day to tell somebody about Jesus Christ, who he is and what he did at Calvary, that's exactly what we're going to um, look at this morning, we're going to look at the, uh, uh, along with that, we're going to look at the ministry of the Apostle Paul and and uh, some of the dealings that he had with the church in Antioch and Jerusalem this morning. Amen. And so, um, as always, I want to encourage you to get your Bible, Good King James Bible, word for word translation, and uh, follow along, take notes this morning, and uh, judge what I say based upon the word of God. Amen. That's, I'm not saying that in an arrogant way or trying to present myself as being perfect by any means, amen, let's be good brands, Paul told the church in Berea, amen, to receive what I have to say and search the scriptures uh, to to see whether or not those things are so, that's a healthy uh, thing for the, the Christian, the child of God to um, uh, to uh, participate in, amen, and if you do that, it'll keep you straight, and me too, amen, so uh, I'm just thrilled and uh, delighted that you saw fit to join me this morning in these teaching sessions. And uh, and uh, the Lord had laid it on my heart uh, some time ago, several months ago, uh, to begin doing this Sunday, excuse me, Tuesday morning trumpet uh, on uh, on Facebook. And, uh, and I prayed and I prayed and amen. And I realized, you know, that uh, Tuesday morning, uh, I didn't want to do anything that would overshadow or undermine or or, or or distract from something that someone else someone else was doing that was preaching the message of the cross. So I realized, well, Pastor Curtis is not doing any teaching on uh, Tuesday morning, so uh, uh, I just chose that this time to to do what I'm doing. Amen. But once again. Uh, I'm just thankful for all of those out there this morning uh, that are teaching the message of the cross without compromise and without fear uh, of men. Uh, those that are pre preaching the message of the cross exclusively, those that are teaching it and preaching it, and they are indeed still determined not to know anything except Jesus Christ and crucified. Amen. And so I'm thankful for these men, these uh pastors and their congregations and and uh you know i may mention a few every once in a while and i may overlook a few amen but uh, uh we're always praying for these pastors amen we pray all the time for the the pastors that are uh that the lord has raised up in this final hour of the church age to get this message out to bring in a harvest and to uh identify a remnant god always has a remnant he always has, he does now. And that remnant has always been small, and uh, that's, that remnant's always been a few, and uh, it will always be a few, and that remnant that God has today is a few. But he does have a few. Praise God for the few and the faithful this morning. Amen. So, once again, I'm, I'm delighted and thankful that you saw fit to join this morning, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started. Uh, amen. Uh, and uh, do take notes, and uh, let's grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior this morning. I'm going to begin. I'm going to begin reading from a passage of Scripture in, in Galatians that we're all familiar with, chapter two. And uh, but before I do that, you know the the common uh, statement that we see, and we we see all sorts of things. You know, there are those out there that I call distractors. You know, we have to learn to, to either, we we learn to either, you, you know, you either deal with them or in most of the time it's just to draw you away and and distract you from doing, carrying out the mandate and what God's called you to do. So, you know, I've learned over a period of time uh, dealing with these people who are called distractors, distractors, amen, and just learn to walk around them, amen. They're going to always be here. They're going to continue to do what they do which is an attempt to distract us from our focus uh, uh, as Nehemiah was, amen, building the wall, the place of uh, a sacrifice, the place of true worship, amen. And today, you know, everything is the same as it was then with Nehemiah. Uh, we're, we're building a, a wall uh, today, amen, and surrounding 
uh, that remnant ourselves included, amen, in, in providing a, a place of sacrifice, place that God will honor, in a place where you find God at work, and there only, only at the cross, will you be will you be able to enter into uh, true worship unto unto God. I mean, there you worship Him in spirit and in truth. Apart from the cross, it's just something that flesh does. It may be extravagant, it may draw a big crowd, Amen. But God's only looking at those who have their faith anchored in the cross, and that's true worship. That brings Him glory and, and brings Him honor. Amen. But uh, one of the things that I've been seeing lately, the, the distractors, you know, they, uh, they use different things at different times. But, uh, you know, they say that we put God in a box. Amen. But the thing of it is, you know, God has put himself uh, within boundaries. God has done that himself. God has put himself within parameters. God has put himself uh, in a box. He only operates in one place, and he's made it uh, easily for us to identify what God works in. Amen. For the Psalms 33 and 4, for the word of the Lord is right, and all of God's works are done in truth. And that truth, as we learn, amen, if, if we'll continue in the words of Christ, if we'll continue uh, in, in this teaching of the message of the cross, we'll learn that, that truth that God works in is uh, Christ and him crucified, the exclusive message of the cross, the person Jesus Christ, who he is and what he did at Calvary. Amen. Well, you know, just look at Romans chapter 8, verse 2. Amen. For the It says, for the law of the Spirit. Amen. Which is, is that's the, there you'll find, there's that parameter. Uh, there's that boundary that God has put himself in, the law of the Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. He's the, he's the Spirit of life, but he only brings life abundant life and and uh, within the framework of our faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. There and there alone. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus uh, takes me right over to Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. Don't you know that so many of us were baptized into Jesus, were baptized into his death? Amen. We've literally been positioned, baptized, immersed into Christ by virtue of our faith in his death. And that's what we're referring to when we use the term cross just as Paul did, amen? Amen, it's pointing to the, the finished work of Christ on the cross, what he did there, amen, not the wooden beam. It's amazing that we have to say that, but we do, because the distractors want to come along and say, well, you're preaching a wooden beam over there. No, we're preaching about what Jesus has done for us 2,000 years ago. It's a finished work, but it's a right now power. It's a right now application. It's a right now work that's going on in the hearts of the people uh, that believe and embrace the exclusive message of the cross, amen? And then it says, uh, Romans 8 and, and 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. That's the, that's the, the place it makes us free. Uh, from what? Well, free from the law of sin and death, amen? The, uh, the only thing that's greater than the law of sin and death is the law of the spirit of life, amen, that's found in Christ Jesus, amen, and it comes to us by virtue of our faith alone, amen, no other way. No, God hasn't given us any other way. So that is the, uh, uh, the, the boundaries that God has put himself in, in, but it's for our benefit. That way we're not chasing rabbits. We're not out here looking for this thing and that thing. That We're not looking for that uh, new thing that's being introduced, you know, paradigm shift. That was a big thing a few years ago. In the Assemblies of God, we're introducing a paradigm shift. Let red flag right off the bat, you know, any kind of shift, uh, any kind of change and uh, shift of focus, amen, beware. Amen. God's only given us one place that we can enter into by faith. Look to him exclusively and expect God to move mightily in our life. Amen. And then over just a few verses there in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, it says, How shall God not with him, Christ in him crucified, also freely 
give us all things, amen, or provide us with all things. And then Simon Peter would say, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, by his divine power, amen, and that's, uh, uh, that's, t- that's tied to the cross. God's power is found at Calvary by his divine power, his wonder-working power, his workmanship, what he does, his work in us, amen, by his divine power, the grace of God, amen, has provided us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So we need not go any other place, ladies and gentlemen, but it's sad to say that uh, the majority of the church is looking to other places today. And we're going to uh, look at that this morning a little bit more, amen. We've been given this this great gift, amen, the, uh, this great gift. You know, I, I made mention on Facebook the other day, you know, if, uh, if, uh, if somebody comes along and they're preaching something other than the cross, they're not a gift from God to the church, amen. Uh, they're not a gift that God has sent to the church if they're preaching something else, amen, and robbing something, just a little phrase. You know, we do that sometimes, amen. Uh, you know, we borrow something that somebody else has said, you know, and if it's good, if it's applicable, if it can benefit me or benefit the people, amen. But it was the cross that made Jesus God's great gift to us, amen. It was the cross, John three sixteen. that's simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, Christ crucified, should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved that he gave, that's speaking of the sacrifice uh, that Jesus accomplished on the cross, amen. He laid his life down, he shed his blood, Amen. Uh, the the covenant is in it. The covenant, uh, the new covenant, is in His blood, and His blood was poured out on the cross. Amen. Think about that. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's a constant believing, and that's a that's a daily abundant life as we take up the cross daily, deny ourselves, and take up the cross and follow Him, which is the only way that we can follow Him. Luke nine and twenty three. Amen. So uh, once again, if the ministry is not offering that gift through preaching it. They are not offering anything to anyone, but rather robbing both God and man. Well, how is it robbing God? Those that are preaching another gospel. Well, if we're only reconciled and redeemed through the blood, we're robbing God of his inheritance, amen. We're robbing him or sons and daughters. We're uh, so we're robbing God and we're robbing men of the truth that says free. We're robbing men uh, of the truth that will bring about uh, growth, that will bring about uh, uh, us being prepared and built up and established in the faith for this final hour of the church age. I say it all the time. And I'm holding to it, amen, that uh, even before the rapture of the church, and I'm not talking about the, the tribulation time or tribulation period, I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about the, the day in which we presently live, there is a falling away, and we see that. If we're not seeing that, uh, we are blind, amen, but it's obvious Amen. To those who have their eyes fixed upon Christ and Him crucified. Amen. It's obvious if you got just a smidgen of discernment about you. Amen. It's obvious that there is a falling away from the faith. And anytime we say the faith, we're talking about the truth, and that is Christ and Him crucified. So we see a departure. We see it a moving away. It's a falling away. And that is the Bible's teaches that, amen, that it's going to happen before the rapture of the church, amen. In the last days, Paul said, there'll be those that will turn from the truth, giving heed, amen, their, to, uh, their, their ears began to itch for other things, giving heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, amen. They began to embrace fallacies, those things that are words of men, that which is fiction instead of the truth, amen. But however, God's raised up a remnant. He's raised up ministers and ministries in this final hour, amen, which is what this trumpet is really all about, 
Amen. I don't. I never considered myself to be a very good teacher, but I'm apt to teach. Amen. But uh, uh, that's what this Tuesday morning broadcast is all about, to try to get people to come back to that foundational work of Christ and what he did at Calvary. Amen. And come back to what God is doing. Come back to the revival, the true revival. There's only The only true revival is found at the cross. Amen. There you'll find life out of death. We're crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, hallelujah, now I'm alive in Christ, amen, so uh, God's blessings are poured out at Calvary, amen, so I want to take you over real quick, and I'm trying my best not to get uh, stuck here, amen, but what a thing to say, amen, hallelujah, amen, Romans chapter 1, uh, Paul said this in verse 14, he said, I'm a debtor, amen, I'm, I'm tying this to what I said earlier about what we should be preaching, amen, presenting the gift of God, which is Christ and what he did at Calvary. Paul said, I'm a debtor. Here he's not talking about his debt to Christ. Christ poured out his blood, laid, gave his life uh, that we might be redeemed. We had this great salvation freely. He paid the price through, paid a great price through his blood that was poured out on Calvary's cross. And he overpaid there. Amen. He didn't just purchase us and then turn us loose in the pasture. Amen. But he overpaid there so that we might be redeemed, that we might be saved, that we might also be sanctified and that we also might find all things that pertains to life and godliness, amen, at one place, faith in the cross, amen, there we find provision, there we find healing, there we find all things that pertains to life and godliness, amen, but the modern day church is, is, is pulling the people over to other things, to law. And uh, really, in my mind, anything other than faith in the cross is law. You can give it whatever type of title you want to. You know, the big thing in uh, several years ago in the church we were in, uh, the Assemblies of God was, um, you know, the Rick Warren, Purpose Driven Life. Purpose Driven Life, it was called, but it's uh, it nothing more than law, amen. And so many of the things that you see that's being promoted in the church today in a great and huge way. People just flock to it. And, uh, and but it's, it's, it's law, amen. When we talk about law, we're not necessarily always talking about just the Ten Commandments or law of Moses, but it could be any kind of law, even unto ourselves. Sometimes we just make up within our mind particular laws that we'll abide by, and we just think that God's going to honor. God doesn't honor anything apart from faith alone in what Jesus did at Calvary, amen. For if righteousness, that right standing, uh, Galatians 2 and 21, if righteousness come by the law, whatever type of law that is, right there is specifically dealing with the law of Moses, but anything else other than faith, amen, is sin and it's a law, amen, that we're trying to operate by. But uh, he said in Galatians 2 and 21, if righteousness come by the law, righteousness is our right standing with God. If it comes by the law, then Christ died in vain. Amen. How much more simple can it be? But we choose to overlook what God is, is presenting to us in his word, these simple truths, the simplicity of Christ. Amen. We, we choose to overlook these things and become influenced by these distractors and deceivers that, that uh, undermine the true message of the cross. They're actually enemies of the cross. That's what the Bible says. They undermine uh, the ministry of preaching the cross and then those that preach the cross exclusively, those that are determined to know nothing else, amen, they say, well, you know, you don't have to preach the cross all the time, yes, we do, amen, it's not the gospel if we don't preach the cross, amen, one said the other day, well, you need to, to preach on the gifts of the Spirit, well, that's true, but you're not going to operate and function in any of those gifts apart from the cross, Amen. If you if you preach on the gifts of the Holy Spirit and 
and do not tie that to the cross, then what you're doing is causing the people to attempt to, to carry out those gifts in the flesh. You're moving the people from the spirit over to works of the flesh, and it won't work, amen? But to, to have the true gifts of the Holy Spirit working in our life, amen, the, that faith must be in the cross, and then God, the Holy Spirit, does it, amen, in our life, amen, the, those are, that's fruit of the Spirit and fruit of righteousness, fruit of that right standing, which comes by faith alone and the cross alone. So Paul said, in uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 14, he said, I'm a debtor. And it's not just him, amen. It's every believer. We, we are debtors, amen, not just to Christ, but, but to humanity, amen. If we have this great gospel, we are debtors to humanity to keep this gospel pure and keep it powerful and then also take it to humanity, amen. You may not be called to go to Honduras, El Salvador, or Nepal or another country, but uh, wherever you are, that is your mission field, wherever you are, amen. People ask, well, where, where, where do I start in evangelism? Where, where are you at is the best place to start. Wherever you are is your evangel evangelistic field, amen. Wherever you are is the place that God has planted you, amen, to tell people about this great gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And there's a lost and a dying world out there that needs to hear this. There, there's a uh, an apostate, a wayward and backslidden, church that needs to hear this. It needs to be preached in the house of God, in the church, amen, and on the street corner as well. So Paul said, I'm a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, to the wise and to the unwise, amen. There's no limit limit to the to the audience that God says uh, we're to take this gospel to. And he says, so as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you also who are at Rome also, amen. And he said, I will go on, amen. And he says in verse 16, he said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I mean, those that are making excuses, trying to move us away from the cross, amen, they're ashamed of the gospel. They're ashamed. They're, they, they, they're making buddies and pals with other avenues and presentation uh, of what they call the gospel. <clears throat> and they, they'll put, that wrap it up with tones of love and grace, you know, amen. Uh, they, they, they'll paint the package up real pretty and, and put scripture on it. They'll come along and say, well, you know, God is, God is love. You know, who in the world are you? God is love, but and that is true. That is scripture, amen. But that's a, nothing more that with a lot of people, just a catchphrase that many use to cover up their compromise. Oh, God's love. What they're trying to do is bring us into that web of deception that they're throwing out there, and I refuse to be caught up in it, amen? Amen. Uh, God is love, but it's the cross that brings us into, as I've already said it, I guess I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself, it's the cross that brings us into all that God is, amen? It is, it's all in Christ, amen, amen. Colossians 2 and 9 says, for in him Christ dwells all the fullness of, of the Godhead bodily, amen? Everything that God is, he's put it in Jesus Christ, amen? And if we if we desire to have it, to obtain it, walk in it, and uh, let it work in our life, we must come in and go through Jesus by the way of the cross, baptized into him. He is our inheritance, glory to God. Everything that we have need of is found in Jesus and the doorway into Christ. Christ said, I'm the door, but that door hinges upon the cross. It's not going to open up for you apart from faith in the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said in Colossians 2 9, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him. Amen. You can't add anything to complete. Think about that for a moment, amen. You cannot add, and, and the church out here is trying to add things. They're trying to add laws, regiments, routines, amen. They're trying to get you to move over yonder, wherever over yonder is, amen, because they're having a 
revival over yonder. Amen. Look, revival's right here, right now, wherever you are by faith. Whatever you have need of, it's, it's just simply, are you willing to believe what God's word says? Amen. Hallelujah. If you'll believe, you'll receive, amen, because God's faithful to that heart and that person who will humble themselves to God's way, amen. So uh, the Bible says we are complete in, in the ark. In, in, in the ark, Noah and his family had everything that they needed. God provided everything. Christ is our ark, amen. Hallelujah. Let us be fair, closed up in him, hid in him, amen. Hallelujah. We are dead uh, uh, by virtue of our faith in the cross and our co-crucifixion with Christ, dead to that old life, dead to that old man, amen. And our life now is hid in Christ, hallelujah, amen. You're complete there, amen. You, you don't add anything to that. Just rest in what God has provided you at Calvary. Just believe that uh, what God's given us and the grace of God, which is uh, the, the sphere of existence within Christ, amen. Just believe that grace is, is enough uh, for us. We don't have to add law. We don't have to add regiments, routines, programs, and what I call religious calisthenics. You don't have to have a celebrate recovery. You don't have to enter into that Emmaus road walk, amen. Just just walk with God. Through, just walk with Christ and take up the cross and just walk with him, amen. Uh, Paul said in uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. Walk in that same redeeming and saving faith that saved you, redeemed you, cleansed you in the very beginning, that same place of power. Walk in that. Keep your faith in that saving place. The faith that works is the faith that saves. The faith that works every day is the faith that saved us in the beginning, amen. Paul said, I know I'm kind of flipping back and forth, just stay with me, amen. That's the reason I tell you to take notes. Sometimes I'm a little hard to keep up with. Amen, Paul said in Galatians chapter three, in verse three, he said, uh, uh, are you so foolish? Are you so foolish having begun or begun in the spirit? Amen. Are you now made perfect by the flesh? And what Paul's saying, you were saved. You began in the spirit, which is grace through faith. Amen. Spiritual work, not anything that we did is what he did at Calvary. Nothing, not, not our performance, not us jumping through hoops, amen, but his great performance and our faith in that alone. How you so foolish, that person is foolish, amen, to have begun by faith, for grace through faith in the spirit, amen. And are you now made perfect by the flesh? You Flesh couldn't save you in the beginning, amen. That's the reason God made me an offer. I couldn't refuse. He said, if you'll bring me all your sin, amen, I'll give you my righteousness. Bring it all to Calvary, amen. Put your faith there in the blood of the lamb, amen. That's where peace is made. That's where enmity has been removed where enmity and peace has been made, enmity removed and peace made with God. Colossians chapter one, verse 20, through the blood of the cross, amen. That's where we come into relationship. That's where we come into the household of God. That is where we are made acceptable, amen, through the blood of the cross, amen. We keep our faith there. Hallelujah. Amen. So faith couldn't save us and faith can't perfect us. Excuse me. Flesh cannot save us and flesh cannot perfect us. Amen. The only thing that can save us is faith in the cross. And the only thing that, that will perfect us and grow us is for us to maintain our faith in what saved us in the beginning. Amen. Now, let me try to get back over to what Paul said in Romans chapter 2 and verse 13 he said for not for he said in uh where am i at 
uh, lost Romans chapter one. He said, I'm a debtor, both unto the Greeks and the barbarians, to the wise and unwise. And he said, so as much as in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are at Rome also. Amen. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That's where I left off. Amen. Of Christ, the gospel of Christ is the message of the cross. The gospel of Christ is the gospel of the cross, amen? Don't make no mistake, we have to know that. I'm not ashamed of the message of the cross, amen? He said, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, the Jew first and also to the Greek. And he said, for therein in that gospel, for therein in the gospel is the righteousness of God found or revealed from faith to faith, amen? So the righteousness, the right standing that we can have with God, the righteousness is found in the gospel. That's what it says. So the, the, Paul said, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17, the gospel is the cross, amen. He said, I didn't come, Christ didn't send me to baptize or, or because Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel, amen, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect, amen. So we see plainly there and elsewhere, I just like to use that particular verse because it makes it so plain to me. I'm quite simple, amen. So we see there that plainly, amen, and, and, and once you enter into this understanding in the light of the cross, amen, then you begin to see it everywhere, amen, that the cross is indeed the gospel, amen, the only place that God's working. It opens it up, it opens it up to you. The moment that you enter in, to this gospel in the light of the scriptures in the in in in, in the cross, Amen. Uh, viewing it all through the cross, it will open up, and you begin to see it everywhere from Genesis to Revelation. Yes, both law and behold. Amen. The cross is indeed the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he said in verse 7, 17, for therein is the righteousness of God. Speaking of, that's where you find it at, at, in the gospel at Calvary. Amen. And he said, uh, reveal from faith to faith as it is written, the just a man shall live by faith, not just come in by faith, but we live by faith daily, amen. Now let me see if I can get back over to where I was at in Galatians, amen. And and I want to, I want to, I want Lord help me, I want to show you something this morning. Uh, and, and so just uh, just pray for me, Lord help, help help that preacher this morning, amen. And hallelujah. And, he, and, and Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 11, and uh, it, it is speaking about, now this is dealing with, uh, speaking about the church in Antioch. There's so much I want to say about that, but I'm just so limited with time. But it says in verse 11, but when Peter was come to Antioch, and he said, Paul said, I withstood him to the face. And he said, because he was to be blamed. Amen. And now, one thing I want to put out there in front of you in case I, I, I forget later. This, this is an example of how important it is that no matter who that person is, we're dealing with the apostle Peter here, Paul is. Amen. And how important it is that whoever that person is, we gauge what they say according to the word of God, amen? We don't just accept what they say and do because they carry a title. Simon Peter was indeed an apostle. He, that is, that's true. Amen. But in this particular setting here, Amen. He, he was he was causing, Amen, a, a disassimilation, which is I think is the word that the Bible uses here. The Scripture uses, which is hypocrisy. Amen. It was causing the people to disassemble from the faith and be carried away to something else, which is law. And, and so. Uh, bear with me on this. He said, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. 
And he says before that, and it said for before that certain, uh, speaking of this apostle, came from James. He said he Peter did eat with the Gentiles, but when they but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, separated himself from the Gentiles, fearing them which were of the circumcision, those that had come down from Jerusalem to Antioch. Amen. But I want to back up just a verse or two, a few words. And it's, inter- it's interesting that the Holy Spirit brought attention to the fact that he did eat. He sat down uh, with the Gentiles, amen, uh, there. But when they, the the those, the law keepers from Jerusalem, when they come down, uh, he, he moved away, he withdrew from the Gentiles and he separated himself, fearing them, amen, the fear of men and the, uh, the allegiance that we oftentimes, and, and I'm, I'm saying we because I'm trying to include all of us, amen, and we're not exempt at any time. We need to examine, the Bible says we need to examine ourselves to be sure that we are in the faith at all times, amen. But uh, it, it says uh, there, he did eat with the Gentiles in that place, <laughs> hallelujah, where we are brought to to eat is at the cross, amen. That is where God has set a table for us, amen. That's where we become partakers of the, the nourishment and the food that God has given us, hallelujah, amen. John chapter six and verse 51 says, I am the living bread which comes down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, amen, and which implies one to continue eating, if if anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. Hallelujah. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. It's available to all men, but life, he says, I give this bread, which is my flesh. And he said, I give it for the life of the world. He says in verse 55, for, he says, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, amen, and he's speaking of the sacrifice that he would accomplish on the cross, the table that has been set before us, even before our enemies is the cross, amen, that is where uh, we we feast, we feast upon the lamb, we feast upon the sacrifice, that is where we're constantly fed, that's where we receive spiritual nourishment, that is the place where we're able to grow, amen man spiritually and, and, and grow and mature. Hallelujah. That feasting place. Uh, once again, Paul said in Acts chapter 2 in verse 28, he's speaking to the, the pastors mainly uh, in the church. He said, take heed. Acts 2 and 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers that may we're to watch over the whole flock, amen, and to feed the church of God, amen. What do we feed? Well, he tells us right here, which has purchased with his own blood, amen, to feed the church of God, that which he has purchased with his blood, hallelujah. A great price was paid for the church, amen, and we're to feed, amen, that church, the, the, the sacrifice. We preach the cross all the time for all things that pertains to life and godliness. Wherever we are, in any setting, whatever church we're in, amen, we're to present Christ and him crucified. That's what the people need, amen, hallelujah. So going back to Galatians here, amen, he said uh, uh, before that certain, verse 12, came from James, uh, he uh, did eat with the Gentiles, but they were come, and when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Amen. So he, he is showing that he had a greater allegiance to these men that were coming in from Jerusalem more so than he uh, did to the gospel of grace. He separated himself from the Gentiles that were saved by grace alone 
through faith alone, just as the apostle Paul taught them to be saved and to live daily. Amen. So he removed himself from them and began to set with the Jews when they would show up. Amen. And then, it, but look what happened in verse 13. And he said the other Jews, those in the church in Antioch, disassembled likewise. Amen. So they followed the leadership of Simon Peter. Amen. They followed the leadership of this apostle, Simon Peter, and they disassembled also, it says. So there was a great division that was taking place here in Antioch. So Simon, so Paul, amen, dealt with it, and he dealt with it rightly by reproving or rebuking Simon Peter right there in front of the, the whole bunch in Antioch, right in front of the whole crowd, and it had to be done, amen, because the uh, the church was at stake. This this church in Antioch was in the was being raised up. The apostle Paul was watching over it. Amen. Gentiles were being saved everywhere he went uh, by the, the message that he preached, the message of the cross. Amen. Apart from the law. Amen. And, and so a great that God was doing a great work in Antioch. And I've got more to say about that in just a moment. But he said in verse 14, but when I saw that... Uh, uh, that they, and it says they, uh, speaking of Simon Peter, uh, and speaking of all of those, whoever they were that came uh, down from Jerusalem, those that were the Jews in the church in Antioch, amen, he said, they walk not uprightly. Amen. They walk not uprightly. That means that they were no longer walking, amen, in the spirit. They were walking according to the law. Amen. They were no longer demonstrating fruit of righteousness in their life. Amen. They were walking uh, not according to the spirit now. Amen. Galatians 5 and 25 says, Amen. If we live in the Spirit, if we've been saved and lived in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Amen. So walking in the Spirit, amen, will bring about a demonstration that will bring about a lifestyle of righteousness, fruit of righteousness. Amen. And he said in verse 15, 16, he said, Galatians 5, 16, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I believe uh, that the lust of the flesh there is dealing primarily front and center, amen, the lust of the flesh to operate according to the law, to do your own thing, amen, something apart from faith alone and what Jesus accomplished on the cross alone. I know it can, it can, uh, I know it can flow on into other things, amen, but uh, uh, that's what was happening here. Uh, they walk not uprightly, according to the truth of the gospel, amen. In other words, they were forsaking the cross. They were forsaking the true gospel and going back under law, amen. And that's what we see a lot of, of, of people a lot happening in the church today. They're leaving the faith and they're going back to what the very place that we were saved from in the beginning. They're, they're drawing people back to laws, back to different things uh, that we were wrapped up in, that we were attempting to try to uh, live by before the message of the cross came. And uh, we see a lot of that going on in the church. So as the apostle Paul dealt with even Simon Peter in this particular situa situation, amen, we, those that God has raised up in this final hour, including myself and others, amen, must openly, vocally deal with these things as well. Amen. And, and he said there that they walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. And, and look what Paul said. He said, I said unto Peter before them all, uh, amen, you, if you, being a Jew, live after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why do you compel 
Amen. You know, Simon Peter understood grace. Amen. He didn't even preach grace. He was saved by grace and, 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 and all of that. But now he's being influenced to depart from that and, and move over. There's, there's a division that's being made in the church there in Antioch. And, he, and, and look what Paul said. Now, because of your behavior and what you're doing, you are compelling others in the church, the Gentiles even, to live as do the Jews. And that is, is one of the things that we continue to make an awareness of. You you may claim to preach uh, the grace of God. You may claim to preach the cross. You may claim to preach the gospel, but by the gospel, but by your associations and your setting with other people, which we're told to come out from, amen, and, and, and by doing that, you are compelling and influencing others to follow in that direction as well. So there's a great falling away. There's a great division that's being uh done in the church now, but it's being carried out and done mainly by those who are departing the faith that came in right, but they're they're no longer, amen, walking uprightly. They they are no longer walking in this faith that brought them in, amen. Not walking in the spirit. Amen. Not uh, displaying fruits other fruit of righteousness, amen. Praise the Lord. And, and so we, uh, there, there is a few, you know, when I, when I think about that church in Antioch, it's interesting. Uh, Acts chapter 11 and verse 20, 26 says, and when Barnabas, Acts chapter 11 and verse 26, and when Barnabas had found Saul, amen, who is Paul, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves. Notice that, that they assembled themselves. How important it is that we assemble together with those of like faith, those that are preaching the cross, amen. It's important. The assembly is important. Those that are preaching the cross. Notice that it says for a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. The church was assembling. Isn't that something? Amen. The church was assembling. The church is supposed to assemble today. Not just any place, just so we can say we went to church and we assembled, but it's important to assemble yourself at a place that is preaching the message of the cross exclusively where you can continue to grow, be rooted and grounded in the faith, in this truth, and mature in grace. Amen. Grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. That's God's way. God hasn't changed his mind. Amen. That's the reason God has raised up the grassroot assemblies out here. They may be small, may not have a large group of people, but God has strategically positioned these pastors and these ministries in specific places to impact not just the, where they're at, not just the region they're at, but the entirety of the world as they go out by live streaming, whether it be by YouTube or whether it be by Facebook or whatever means that God has given them to impact the world. Amen. So God's raised these up, small groups and assemblies. But back to Acts eleven twenty six, and when Barnabas had found Saul, he brought him to Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Amen. So here we see the beginning of the teaching that was revealed to Paul by Christ of the new covenant and the meaning of the cross. Yes. So now I want you to see something on the back side of what I've just said. It says there in Acts 11 and 26, and it says the disciples were called Christians first 
in Antioch. Isn't that interesting? Amen. The disciples were are now being called Christians, and that's where they were called Christians first, in Antioch, not Jerusalem, not Jerusalem, amen, because why? Because it was wrapped up in law, amen. But in Antioch, where the teachings of the apostle Paul was going forth, amen, and, and Paul put uh, a stop to that uh, uh, influence out of Jerusalem and the law and even Simon Peter at that time, amen. So we see, amen, fruit of righteousness. We see them walking in the spirit. We see God doing a great work in their life where by now they're, be, now they're being identified, amen, as Christians, Christ like, glory to God. Amen, apart from the cross, uh, all you do is just get wrapped up in religious calisthenics, amen. But at the cross, there's a life-changing power at work, amen. At the cross, we're made to be Christians, hallelujah, praise the Lord. There's evidence uh, uh, of a changed life. One of the things, let me give you uh, 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 four things in particular that the law will most, most certainly do. The law puts sin in motion in us. Romans 7 and 5. The law is the strength of sin. Amen. Meaning apart from faith, the believer, amen, will be ruled by evil desires. Amen. The law is the strength of sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 56. And sin takes occasion by the law. Romans 7 and 8. And then law works wrath against those who are under it. Romans 4 and 15. So the law is no place. Righteousness doesn't come by law. If it does, then Christ died in vain. Amen. Praise the Lord. So here in Galatians, after uh, reviewing what Paul said about what took place in Antioch, Amen. Paul dealt with it properly by, by stopping what was going on in the church and the influence of Simon Peter at that particular time. Thank God, you know, that uh, Simon Peter, and we're believing the rest of those that was described as they or them, amen, we're, Simon Peter repented, hallelujah. And there now we have his great epistle that he wrote to two of them, first and second Peter to the church. And when you study these epistles now, you see it's almost, it's like listening to the, the teachings of the apostle Paul. He echoes uh, the very character and the teachings of the apostle Paul, hallelujah. And he, he refers to Paul of being his beloved brother uh, in the faith, amen. And, uh, and it's a beautiful thing. So we see that Peter was willing to receive the reproof and the, the rebuke and the correction that, and even though it was strong, even though it was in front of the, the, the entirety of the church in Antioch, we see that he was willing to receive that and the difference that it made in his life, amen? But today, it's sad to say that the majority of those that are leaving the faith instead of receiving the correction and the reproof that's being given that's being uh, given out by people such as what you're listening to this morning on this trumpet and others amen it's being it's being just swept under the rug amen they begin to say well who do you think you are amen what gives you the right to be able to correct us amen uh who in the world do you think you are what what authority do you have uh to correct us well i have a bible amen the word of god is what uh, equips me to not only be able to identify uh wrong direction and uh, those are walking not upright 
uh, whoever they are, wherever they might be, amen. And so it's the Bible that gives me the authority and the ability to be able to, for their benefit, uh, for the hope to return these, from the, to turn these from the direction that they're going, amen. So if it wasn't for the few that are speaking, speaking up in this final hour when there is a few, if it wasn't for those, just think about how far the church would have apostatized even more today if there wasn't for a few that's willing to speak up in this final hour and say you're you you are causing a division you are bringing people back under law you are, are drawing people away from the place that god has given us to find victory uh over sin to find, find victory over the all anything and everything that the enemy could use against us, you're drawing people away. And I'm thankful for those few today, amen. But uh, they say, well, you know, they, they tell us to shut up, uh, you know, sit down and be quiet. Well, we cannot. Uh, we cannot, amen. We refuse to do that. God has given us this message, amen. He's given us, by the grace of God, a determination to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified, to preach the message of the cross exclu exclusively. And our heart breaks for those that are being influenced by hype, that are being influenced by laws, that are being influenced by, uh, you know, good feelings and that sort of thing, Whatever, uh, whatever's being done, amen, they're being influenced by that, being drawn away from the faith. Uh, whereby God can work in our life, amen, and that place is the cross, hallelujah, amen. You know, uh, I think about, you know, in that church in Antioch, you know, how beautiful it is. There they identified, uh, their lifestyle is being identified as being one of Christ. They're called Christians in Antioch. Paul is watching over that church and he's uh, he's maintaining this true gospel uh, that's being preached there in Antioch, amen. And, and, and so in Antioch, amen, you see this was the place where uh, evangelism throughout the entirety of the Roman Empire is being spearheaded, not from, not from Jerusalem, Amen. Not from Jerusalem, not from the big church in Jerusalem, because they're all wrapped up in law. They're wrapped up in other things. They're wrapped up in themselves. Amen. But in Antioch, amen, this word now, God is spearheading through the apostle Paul and his companions in the faith. Amen. Those that sold out to the gospel. Now God is spearheading evangelism throughout the world of that day, which is the Roman Empire. Amen. I, I said it Sunday morning. You know, I think it's interesting. You know, the Roman soldiers are known for building great roads throughout the Roman Empire. And some of them are still in existence today, if not most. And I'm thinking, man, we got potholes all over Greenwood. Amen. You can't hardly drive down the road without out, uh, blowing out a tire and we have uh, we have engineers and modern equipment and uh, such as that but the Roman roads or some of them are still in existence today but those Roman soldiers thought they were building those roads for themselves to march on and for kings and queens uh, in the Roman Empire but he was they were actually building those roads for the apostle Paul hallelujah to take this great gospel he said i'm ready to go throughout the, the, the world and preach this gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified. I'm ready with, with all that is within me, he said, and everything that's within him, what he's referring to there is the grace of God, God working mightily in him. What was it that, that caused the grace of God to work mightily within this man of God? It's because he was determined not to know anything among uh anyone except Christ in him crucified. When God finds that kind of determination, that kind of faith, he'll work mightily within that individual as well. Much cross, much grace, amen, hallelujah. Little cross, God can do very little, amen. But there's, there's modern day 
uh, Antiochs that's been raised up in the day and time in which we live as well. Amen. I, I think about uh, people like uh, Pastor Scotty Williams over there in Dublin, Georgia. I'm not ashamed of anyone that preaches the cross. It doesn't matter who they are or where they are. Amen. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Anybody that preaches it, I think about Pastor Scotty. Uh, God's raised him up over there in Dublin, Georgia. Thank God for this brother, determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and crucified. Made up his mind to preach the cross exclusively. And yes, the boy he has, uh, they're throwing darts at him left and right. They're shooting at him from every direction, amen. But he's got on the shield uh, of Christ. He's put on the whole armor of God, which is Christ. He's hid in him, amen. He just keeps on plowing, keeps on preaching. Praise God for men such as that, Pastor Curtis Hutchinson over there in Queen City, Texas. Thank you, God, for this brother. Amen. Same thing over there. God's raised this brother up, strategically positioned him where he's at in Queen City, Texas to, to impact not just that region, but the little of the world with the message of the cross. Brother Scotty Williams, he goes out by live streaming. Amen. Often. And that's an avenue that God's given him to impact the world, amen, with, with this, this true gospel, that could, this life-changing, life-saving gospel, hallelujah. Uh, Brother Clint Bass over there in Palestine, Texas, amen, God's raised him up. And this final hour has equipped him, amen, to also not only impact that region, amen, but literally the world, amen, as his messages and his teaching goes out, around the world by live streaming and, and there are others, amen and, and there are others, I, I'm sure that God has raised up amen, there's there's others around the country, amen but but if you don't communicate with me, I don't know who you are amen, I, I think about these, these are just on the top of my thinking because uh, these communicate with me uh, quite regularly and ever so often, so they just stay uh, on my mind. And I'm not here just to endorse someone, amen, trying to build a relationship with anyone. I'm not doing that, not trying to puff up anyone. I just want the body of Christ to understand that God is raising up some people, Amen. Some people liken unto Gideon, some people liken unto Amos, some people in this uh, pastors that are sold out to this great gospel in this final hour. Amen. And if you'll listen to these, amen, it will bring a refreshing, it will bring rest to your soul. Amen. It'll bring you back to that great peace, back to that first love that you had in the beginning. It'll bring you back into uh, what God is doing. It'll it will cause you to turn again from those uh, ways of law and turn away from the ways of that old nature and that old man that we were uh, delivered from through the cross, amen. Hallelujah, we're a new creature. We're a new creation now in Christ Jesus, amen. All things passed away. Don't go back to those all things Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 in verse 18. He said, For if I build again the things which I destroyed, if I revert back to the ways of the law, if I revert back to the old, he said, I make myself a transgressor. It's no time, ladies and gentlemen, in this final hour of the church age to be going back. Amen. Don't allow celebrity preachers, big name preachers, as Simon Peter would be at that time, but he's drawing the church in the wrong direction. Amen. Don't allow those to, to lure you back, amen, because of their titles and because of their name and who they are. Do not allow that, amen. Hallelujah. It's time to be marching forward. It's time to be marching on. We say it quite often. There is indeed great things ahead for those who had their faith anchored in this cross. And those great things are not an accumulation of, of stuff. Amen. That great thing is this great treasure that we found in Christ Jesus. This treasure in earthen vessels. Amen. Christ in us. 
The great things that God has in store for the few that he's raised up, that are determined to know nothing but Christ and him crucified, that are sold out to that message, amen, that are preaching the cross exclusively. In the days ahead, God will use these to impact this world and the apostate church with the truth and they will, they'll be given an opportunity to repent and come back to that saving place. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. God is speaking in this final hour. God is warning church and God is reaching. This, uh, the, these things that we say, we're not browbeating anyone. We're not condemning anyone. We're, God is reaching out through the voices of a few. God is reaching out by his great love, saying come, for you to come back to that first love and for you to come back from Calvary. We say it all the time, to be determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified, clinging to the cross, turning from everything else, and go on with him. That's what I'm determined to do today. We keep clinging to that old cross where I found that old power, that life-changing power. And I'm determined to turn from everything else where I can go on with Jesus. Amen. The Apostle Paul, as he wrote his final epistle to uh, Timothy, Second Timothy, amen. Paul said, I've kept the course. I've fought the fight. I've kept the faith all the way to the end. And he said, henceforth, there's laid up for me now a crown of righteousness. And he said, not to me only, but to all those who love his appearing. Amen. When he said that, amen, he's speaking about the revelation of the cross, that revelation that God, that Christ gave Paul exclusively that he's given to us. Now we take, we take up that torch and the mandate has been laid upon us to keep it pure, to keep out leaven. Amen. For the generations ahead, should the Lord tarry. Amen. And Paul said, henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, but not to me only, but to all of those who love his appearing. Speaking of those who love the revelation of the cross, the revelation of Christ in him crucified. Keep your eyes fixed upon the cross. Keep your eyes fixed, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Well, praise God. Amen. I could go on and on as always. I pray to God that I've said something this morning that's been a blessing and encouragement, even a challenge to you. Maybe praying that you might even be convicted and convinced. If anything, convinced this morning. Amen. To get on back, to get back on board with the gospel ship. Well, praise God. Get 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 back on the ark today. Hallelujah. Pray, don't be swept away with the waters of judgment like those in Noah's day. Amen. Back on board with Christ and him crucified. Let's start marching together again in this great gospel. Amen. Let's be involved in this great harvest. Hallelujah. Let's not be among those who are laboring in other things and luring people away, but let us be those that are heralding this great gospel and pointing people to Jesus Christ and him crucified. Let us be ready. Amen. To take this gospel, amen, to all throughout the world. And that world begins today right here in front of us. Our world is right here where we're at, where we've been positioned. Amen. That's your evangelistic field. Amen. Get on board. Come back to the cross. Repent. And turn from the way that you're going. In the eyes of God, they're wicked ways. Paul said, these are made of transgression. Paul said that these are walk not uprightly before the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Let us not be found there. Amen. Let us be found taking up that cross, denying law, denying self, denying our own will, denying all of that. Amen. And taking up the cross again. To take it off means to have your, to take it up means to have your faith in the cross, to take it up once again and follow Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you. Love you each and every one. See you next time.